seven values of sufis or seven values of meditation. This number seven, mystical number. Sufis talk of seven values. Hindus and Tantra speaks of chakras, seven chakras. Buddhist scriptures talk about seven temples. Christian mystics talk about seven churches. The importance is of seven. When you cross the seven, you reach the eight. Rainbow has seven colors. That is what we are told and we know. But there is another color which is eight, which comes, which becomes visible only after seven. In the same way, when we look at the musical notes, there are seven notes. In Ram Manas, the Hindu scripture, coming to the end, it has seven parts and the eighth part was written afterwards. Only if you are able to understand the seven parts or chapters, then you can understand the eighth. At another time, I will come the Buddhists talk about seven temples. First is the physical, second is the psychosomatic, third is psychological, fourth is psycho-spiritual, fifth temple is spiritual, sixth is spiritual, transcendental and seventh and the ultimate temple of temples is transcendental, which is similar. In one of the sutras, that is Prajna Paramitra, Hardayam Sutra, or popularly known as Heart Sutra, in which Buddha spoke to one of the monks, Sariputta, and these sutras belong to the seven temples. Nothing beyond, below that, seven, so that one can attain to transcendence. We have reached the valley of tribulations, which is the fourth valley. The valley of tribulation, it is the entry into the unconscious. Up to now, your journey was through the conscious layers. Now, for the first time, you are entering into the unconscious layers. When we look at the sickness, every individual, as we interact into the world of objects and being, we leave something incomplete. When we are meeting someone, we do not meet in our totality. Something always remains incomplete. And each one of us has unresolved issues. And these issues block the flow of energy, which later on manifests as diseases of many types. So for the first time you are entering into the deeper realms of your being, the unconscious, the darker part, the night part. Up to now, you were in the day part. It was easier. Now things will become more difficult. The higher you go, the more you have to do. With each higher step, the journey becomes more arduous and fall becomes more dangerous. One has to be more and more alert. On each step more awareness will be needed because you are moving on the higher planes and awareness is necessary. The valley of tribulation is entering into unconscious. This valley, the fourth valley of tribulations, I have spoken in the last session. Fifth is called thundering valley. In the fifth valley you enter Death. In the fourth, you have entered sleep or darkness. In the fifth, you enter death. Or if you like to use modern terminology for it, in the fourth, you enter the personal layer of unconscious. In the fifth, you enter the collective unconscious. I have explained earlier on, if we take, draw two axes, X and Y, Normally in geometry, we draw the x and y axis, the y axis going up and the x axis moving rightwards. In this position, the ordinates of x and y are positive. To the left of the ordinates where the 
value of the x and y ordinates is 0, 0 or where the x and y axis intersect one another. To the left of the x axis, the x ordinate becomes negative but y remains positive. And when we go below the 0, 0 ordinate, where both x and y ordinates become negative, the unconscious belongs to that. You have your own individual unconsciousness, but when many people get together, it becomes a collective unconscious. So in the valley of tribulations, we have entered into the individual unconscious. A best example is, on your own, you will not keep something from anyone. Some people do, but I am talking in general. But when there is a roy, or any of those kind of activities where there is a mass demonstration and a rampage, even if you do not work, you enter into this. This is called collective unconsciousness. Great fear arises because you are losing your individuality. You are becoming part of the mob. The mob mentality or the crowd mentality is totally different than individual mentality. In the fourth, you are losing life, day, but you are there. In the fifth, you are losing yourself. You do not feel as if you are. You are dispersing, you are melting. Your feeling that I am a center starts becoming way cloudy and it is difficult to recognize that. With entry into death, entry into the collective unconscious, great fear arises, anguish is felt, great anguish that you will ever feel because there comes the question to be or not to be. You are disappearing, your whole being will hanker to be, you would like to go back to the four. It was dark, but at least it was good. You were there. Now the darkness has become dense. Not only that, you are disappearing into it. Soon, not even a trace will be left of you. The negative part is clinging to the self. That is why great masters like Buddha or Jalaluddin Rumi insist, remember, no self, anatta, Sufis call it fana, one disappears, and one should prepare for this disappearing. One should be ready, not only ready, but in a deep welcome state. It is going to bring great joy, because all your misery is contained in your ego. The very idea that I am is your illusion. The very idea that I am creates all kind of anxieties and problems for you. The ego is the hell. Jean Paul Sartre has said, hell is the other people that is not right. The hell is you. The hell is the ego. If other people feel like the hell, they feel like the hell because of the ego, because they hurt it continuously. They go on pushing your button. Because you have this wound of ego, everybody seems to hurt. And it seems as if you have given your remote controls to everyone and they are manipulating the screen to bring out onto the surface whatever they like. And you very intelligently say that this person makes me angry. This person makes me frustrated, as if you have given your remote controls to those people to make you angry or frustrated or happy or all, as if you have become a puppet. Because you have this wound of ego, everybody seems to feel it is just your idea that I am a special, and when somebody does not recognize it, it gives pain. When you do not have any idea of being special, what Zen people call to become ordinary. If you become ordinary, then this valley can be closed. If you become nobody, 
then this value can easily be closed. So the negative part is clinging to the sun and the positive part is relaxing into no sun or an emptiness into nothingness. You are ready to die willingly, joyously and voluntarily. This is the state of fun. Imagine yourself like a drop. Have you heard? Have you imagined the biography of a drop? The river water does not merge with the ocean in streams. Instead, it merges into the vastness of the ocean in small droplets. Just before merging into ocean, the drop has its identity, its individuality. It knew everything about itself. Ego was dominant, that I am a drop. I am a drop from river Thames. I am a drop from river Nile. I am a drop from Hudson or Amazon or Ganges or any other name of the rivers. But the moment this drop, there is a trembling in the drop because the drop is going to lose its identity. Up to now it has known itself as a drop from this particular river. This is how your identity has been that you are born as an Indian, as an African, as an American or any other. This is your identity. You are born as a male, you are born as a female. In many things like this, you are born and grow up as a Hindu, as a Christian, as a Islam, in Islamic tradition. All these are the individualities. But the moment they drop, as a drop you merge into the ocean, all these disappear. Then only one thing remains, ocean. Whether it is you or I or whoever it is, whether it is a black, white or green, whether it is an Indian or national, they, for instance, the, each river belongs to a particular country. Hudson flows in New York, Thames flows in London, Niles flows in Africa somewhere, the Ganges flows in India. So they have their nationality. But the moment that drop merges into the ocean, it loses its identity. What it will be known? Because you are, just as you are a small droplet, so too is your thinking, your understanding. You do not have the cosmic understanding as yet. Everything is very narrow and that an ego is a narrow shell. It brings tremendous fear in you. There is trembling because you are entering into something, the vastness that you have never known before. That is that entry. The drop is going to die as it is. And that death as you are, so that you can be reborn, is known as Fana. When you come to a shin, he gives you a new name. He gives, he wants you to be known, to know yourself, to live your life with that identity. That is your potentiality. To explore that hidden potential in you, a new name is given to you. But after initiation, we avoid even that name. We do not mention, use that name. For instance, all my legal and other names have vanished when this name evolved out of deep understanding Tao Shubha. Yet still in legal circles because of the passport, because of all other things, that is the identity. But beyond that I have a greater identity which is Tao Shubha, the cosmic being. So when an individual is crossing the fourth valley of tribulation and enters the fifth valley, the thundering valley. It is entering into the collective unconscious that you remember is still before the person actually enters the valley. 
there is many negative things. Before the drop merges into ocean, it has trembling and many kinds of fear are there that what will happen, how will I be known afterwards, what will be my nature, all this. But the moment drop merges in the ocean, it attains to a different texture, it becomes ocean. But still there is a little bit of discomfort until the drop totally dissolves. Because you remember it is death, the process of death has not complete, is not complete as yet. And the moment it completes, you realize that you have attained to the status of the ocean. Ocean then lends its quality to you. You recognize that you have the qualities of the ocean. Your individual taste has merged as with the taste of the ocean and now you are. Your taste is ocean. This is the positive aspect of pondering. Right.